Hello again guys, welcome back, this is Comic Kid here again, and today we have another action figure review for you guys. Now, I am super excited to talk about what we have here today, and that is because we are looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse uh, comic book Joker and Flash figures. Now, both of these are supposed to be based off the Rebirth designs, but McFarlane still took a few liberties here and there, and we'll kind of go into that in this video, but I'm still super excited to have them. It's definitely been a while since we've gotten a great, like, Flash figure, and, you know, we've had the DC Essentials one, we've had the DC Icons one, but they each had their own kind of, like, major flaws here and there, and I wouldn't call the McFarlane one perfect as well, but it definitely has some strengths that the essentials and icons were certainly lacking, and I'll cover that here in a bit. But especially when it comes to the Joker, when it just seems like it's hard to do a really good comic accurate Joker. And for all the Joker figures that are out there, I think this one, at least in the box, looks like it's gonna be one of the better ones. Again, I'm still not a huge fan of the seven inch scale but I mean looking at him right here I don't really see any major complaints but we'll get into that in a minute now right off the bat you'll notice that the two are actually posed to a limited degree with Joker and to a major degree with Flash uh, I believe this is something McFarlane is going to continue doing as they release more figures. And I actually kind of like it. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit unconventional. I guess people are so used to seeing their toys coming so rigid and just kind of in the museum pose on the shelves. But I mean, look at that flash. It's clearly a posable figure and so I think it might benefit McFarlane in the long run to keep posing their figures. It definitely catches the eye. Now aside from that, you have some pretty standard packaging for the both of them. Uh, a few details on the back, uh, standard McFarlane stuff, all the licensing, this, that, the other. So, I mean, you guys get the gist of it there. But we're gonna go ahead and crack these bad boys open and look at some more specifics for them. Alrighty guys, now here they are out of the box and everything, and I'm pretty impressed with what I see here. Now right off the bat you'll kind of notice Joker's leaning really far forward, and that's because when he's in a bit more of a natural museum pose, uh, he does have a hard time standing. He's very back heavy, and so he'll probably need his stand for whatever pose I do decide to put him in, but there is that. And then I've also noticed that it kind of seems like Flash's right leg is longer than his left leg, because you'll notice it's bent at the knee there. And I don't know if that's just my figure in particular, or if that's how it is across all of them, or if it's just because it was how he was positioned in the box. I do kind of notice that the hip piece does have a fold there, and we'll kind of get into that with the sculpt and whatnot, but, you know, for $20, they still look pretty decent. Um, to start with the accessories, you know, obviously they come with the standard character cards here and the DC bases, and in my opinion, Joker is really light on accessories. Uh, they do fit, you have the really long revolver there, and a classic crowbar. Now they are the exact same color, they're both just the same shade of gray. I think they could have done a little bit better there. But like, no cards, no extra hands, no chattering teeth, no like, laughing fish. Like, Joker especially seems really light on accessories, in my opinion. Then of course you get to Flash, who I feel like comes with everything he needs. Uh, you have a piece that plugs into his back to simulate some lightning. You have some smaller lightning detail pieces there that kind of clip into several different parts of his body, which I'll cover soon. And then you actually have this piece here, which is a foot piece. And what I actually really like about this one is not only can you put his foot in there, but you can also attach this piece to the base. So you'll see it's got that little hole right there. 
And so I actually think that's a really nice touch on McFarlane's part. That way you can kind of shift all the weight to that foot and still have it technically be off the ground while still being attached to the stand in the end. So in summary, I feel as though Flash comes with a perfectly appropriate amount of accessories and I do feel as though Joker is a little light. In all honesty, I kind of wish McFarlane would, like if it's a cost thing, I could do without the character cards myself. I just kind of throw them in a box when I'm done. I don't like set them up next to each character and like display them or anything. And so if, if he needs to cut those in order to spend money on extra accessories, I kind of think I'd rather him do that. But that's besides the point. Now to go into each figure in particular, we'll start with Joker here on the left. As far as the general sculpt goes, I think he did a really good job. Um, the legs themselves do kind of curve out, and because there's no like break in the legs there, it could be a little hard to pose him in some really complex poses, but I really like that double jointed elbow. You'll notice it comes all the way up. And then the ball joints in the hands are a little hidden. They're especially hidden in the feet by these really long ankles. And while I'd rather he have the really long pant legs, I just wish those ankle joints were a bit easier to access. Uh, he does have an ab crunch. This is a very soft plastic here and I actually love how well it hides that joint overall. And then you do see a little bit of butterfly shoulder in there as well. And then of course you have the break right there in the shoulder. And then he can't quite look up very well, but he can look down pretty well too. And so, you know, nothing too complex or exciting in the neck there, but that's Joker for you. Uh, the other thing is, I feel as though the face is sculpted very well. I probably couldn't have asked for a better Joker sculpt. I like the way the hair actually stands out and protrudes from the figure here, especially from the side there. You're like, it looks like the Joker. Really, the only complaint that I have is in the face around the eyes. That, like, kind of pinkish red is just really throwing me off, and I don't know if it'd look better if it were an actual white, or if it would be better as like a grayish black, like I'm not 100% sure on that. But you actually see he does have a painted tongue in there as well, and so their attention to detail is still really solid. Uh, the suit itself is also textured, like you can run your fingers along there and it feels just like it looks, and so they did a really good job with that too. So, while I do think there's still a little room for improvement, I do think it's still a really solid Joker figure. To compare it, I have one of the earlier Mattel ones here. You'll notice he is significantly shorter, but again, you know, Mattel was 6 inch and McFarlane is 7. But you only have one elbow joint that doesn't even go to a full 90 degree angle. You have a super obvious ab crunch that feels... Eh, Still pretty limited. Uh, mine in particular has a very stiff neck joint, so I'm not gonna mess with him there. But despite the fact that this is not the most recent Mattel Joker that they ever put out, it's still a significant improvement from everything collectors got when Mattel actually had the license. So for something that's the exact same price, I would certainly much rather have the McFarlane Joker than any of the ones that Mattel gave us over the years. Now to transition to the Flash figure himself. Uh, the general sculpt I'm actually pretty pleased with. You know, he's bulky but not too bulky. That You can tell they didn't just reuse the Superman body and it actually I think is an entirely new sculpt. I could be mistaken there. But one of the most immediate things that I notice is that his right leg seems to be longer than his left leg. I mentioned that to y'all, but like when I pull it out like that and stand him up, he just tends to lean to his left. And I don't know if that's just how the figure is with how I have him at the moment, but I mean, I'm going to be posing him. It, will hardly be noticeable at that point anyways, but I still thought it was, you know, 
a little odd to see something like that. Uh, but the other thing as far as the sculpt goes is I absolutely love the ribbing that goes kind of throughout it. Uh, just this small little texture within the suit is a bit more unique. Uh, the icons and essentials flash both had a very like basic smooth design and I understand that some people would like that but I also feel like the ribbing just really adds a whole lot of extra that they probably didn't even really need to include. So I do applaud McFarlane for that. Uh, the other thing about the sculpt is that the gauntlets or the gloves that he's wearing do actually protrude from right under the elbows there. Uh, the boots are also sculpted and yeah. Uh, the other thing that I really like about this is the face for this Flash. You'll notice he's got that bit of a, that tiny little bit of a smirk there, and that just speaks incredible volumes in my opinion. I also feel as though the eyes are really well painted, and there is another version of this figure that I'm sure y'all have heard about uh, that comes in the Red Death 2-pack, and that one does have a significantly different facial expression, but between the two I would much rather have this one than a Flash that almost looks like he's constipated. I don't know. Uh, if I did end up getting the two-pack, it would be for the Red Death, but I don't imagine myself getting that one. Uh, now, I am much looking forward to the uh, Nightwing and Red Hood two-pack that McFarlane has on the way as well, but for the moment, this is definitely going to be my Flash figure. Uh, the other thing is that the symbol actually protrudes from the chest, in a pretty dramatic way, like, you can't really tell from here, but I don't think my fingernail can touch down in there, and they're not very long at all. So, yeah, really the only complaint that I have about the sculpt for this figure, aside from a leg that is potentially much too long, is the incredibly long ears here. Now, looking at them from the side, you can still see, like, it's, it's a bit much. Now, I totally expect this knowing McFarlane's style, and it's not at all a deal breaker, I just think it's a bit much. I've decided I might just take a nail clipper and kind of just pinch those off. I don't know yet. I don't absolutely hate it, but it's definitely a bit more unconventional for what is supposed to be a pretty simple and basic flash design. So. I don't know, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below about the, the really long lightning years. Now before we get into the articulation for him or like the paint or anything, I do also feel the need to mention that he could also use more hands. Really all McFarlane had to do was include a left fist and a right open palm and apparently that was not an option. Even the one that comes in the Red Death has the exact same body sculpt with a left handed open palm hand and a right handed closed fist. So it's not like if you bought him you could swap out the hands and have him with two open palms or two fists or anything like that. Now this might be something that they correct later down the line, you know, you know it's the Flash, you kind of expect them to do several different suits. At the point of me recording this video, they've already announced an Injustice 2 Flash from the Gods Among Us game, which seems to have the exact same issue, honestly. So yeah, I do have a few minor hiccups with this figure, but aside from the accessories and the really long ears, I actually think he's a really, really solid Flash figure. I don't have the icons or newest DC Essentials to compare him to, but I do have the one that was based off the New 52. Uh, unfortunately, he took a big bad tumble and he lost that earpiece there, but the articulation on this figure is incredibly limited. He just has a few points and at that point it's kind of like why bother including them. But for two renditions of the Flash that are effectively the same thing, McFarlane is still a step up from at least this one in my opinion. Now, since these two are side by side, we'll look into the paint. 
and you'll notice that one of the key distinctions is actually the yellow lightning protruding from the flash emblem in his chest and I actually really like this detail I honestly wouldn't mind if they had like traces of yellow kind of going throughout the full suit as you can see in the rebirth flash card here he's actually got a little bit of yellow running <laughs> in plenty of other places throughout the suit and so as long as it were subtle I certainly wouldn't mind at all if McFarlane added a little bit more yellow in there. And especially in the face for this figure, you know, that's definitely one of the most important parts but I just really feel as though they did a great job painting him. And especially for a $20 figure, you know, I'm super stoked with how he turned out. But we'll go ahead and get this one out of the way and discuss some of the articulation for McFarlane's Flash. Now, once again, he's a pretty standard McFarlane articulated figure. He comes with the toe joints that go very significant. And as y'all know, I'm not normally a fan of toe joints. Uh, I don't really feel as though they make or break a figure that much. But in this case, I would definitely say it is a huge help to this flash figure especially when you have a piece like this you're gonna want that toe joint to give a little just so this has the leeway to land parallel with it but everything else you have the standard ball joint in the ankle which is significantly easier to maneuver than in the joker you have double jointed knees this one is a little stiff but it is there. Uh, you have a really solid range on the legs there. That's a pretty solid 90 degree angle. And it comes down, goes out. Really the only thing it's missing is a break there so you can kind of spin it a little better. Uh, ab crunch actually feels a little more limited than the Joker one, which doesn't make much sense to me, but uh, it's still there, it's just fairly limited, but again you have the torso swivel, you have some pretty defined butterfly shoulders there, and for a figure like Flash I would hope that those would be there. Uh, it'll definitely help with some more like complex, like kind of sliding poses and whatnot. Uh, the standard double jointed elbows and again a much more easy to maneuver ball joint in the wrist and then unlike the Joker as y'all kind of already saw he's got pretty good head range uh, he can't quite look up but I mean that's a pretty good downward motion there and so yeah and then one of the other things that I actually forgot to mention in the sculpt is he actually has these extra holes here that the lightning simply just plugs into. And it is a little difficult, but you know, you can get it. And one thing I actually really like about this is they spin. So depending on whichever direction Flash himself is actually traveling, you can just alter that direction with the lightning and it just makes it seem all that more realistic. Alrighty guys, and that is about everything that I have for y'all today as far as these figures go. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with them. Uh, I'd probably give McFarlane like a B plus or an A minus on these figures. There's still a little bit of room for improvement, but you know, it's his first go at the Flash. And while he's done other Jokers so far, he hasn't done one quite like this. And so while there's still some room for improvement, these are some pretty solid first renditions in my opinion. But I'm super excited to have these. They're definitely going to replace the ones that I had on my shelf. And I'm hoping to have some really cool photos here at the end for y'all as well. But let me know what you guys think of these two down in the comments section below. Please feel free to smash that like and subscribe button. And I will see you all again really soon.